The top 10 rookies in the NBA today ranked based off their current value. Golden State's number two pick James Wiseman has been the center that the Warriors were looking for throughout their run to five straight finals appearances. Boston's number 26 overall pick Peyton Pritchard's leading the contending Celtics in bench scoring. In this video, you'll find out who the top two first year players are and make sure you stick around to find out my early prediction for the Rookie of the Year award. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to DFlow Hoops. If you're a new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA player rankings, predictions, as well as stories about the league, welcome aboard. You came to the right place. Please subscribe and hit notifications so you're updated every time I post content. Let's get into this. Number 10, Emmanuel Quickly. The 21-year-old from Kentucky was selected 25th by the OKC Thunder and was traded to New York two days after the 2020 NBA draft. In his last four games, he's averaging 17.5 points, 4.3 assists, and almost a steal per game while shooting 45% from three on five attempts and all in just 21 minutes. More than his numbers though, what separates quickly from the rest of rookies that could have been ranked at number 10 is the fact that he's a valuable player on both ends of the floor. Quickly's strength, athleticism, and the fact that he has great size for a point guard make him an NBA-ready defender. Offensively, his floater game make him a crafty player on that end, where he's able to get buckets at ease in the pick and roll with a soft touch around the basket. Maybe he should be playing more than 17.3 minutes per game, because Quickly's per 36 minute stats are off the charts in his rookie campaign. Regardless, he's looking like a late first round steal for New York, and he's been a crucial bench piece for the Knicks, who are shockingly tied for the eighth seed in the East. Number nine, Desmond Bain. You could argue that his teammate Xavier Tillman Sr. could be on this list, but the Grizzlies 30th overall draft pick Desmond Bain has proved that the ability to finish through contact and shoot from distance that he showed off at TCU can hold up at the pro level. In all but one of the 13 games he's played with Memphis, Bain scored at least six points, and he's done that very efficiently. The man's taking just under four threes per game and hitting nearly half of them. So Memphis has a solid prospect next to John ja Morant and of course Triple J when the big man gets healthy. Number eight, Isaac Okoro. Playing over 37 minutes for the Cavaliers, Okoro's been a valuable tone setter on both ends of the floor for the fifth seeded Cavaliers. The Cavs' fifth pick in 2020 has looked beyond NBA ready right off the bat in his career as he hit a game winner in his preseason debut and has averaged nine points per game on solid shooting splits for a player facing the harsh reality of his first season amongst the toughest basketball competition in the world. <laughs> I'm just gonna use that to feel feel this. I mean, I'm better, but. <laughs> come on, man. I mean, come on, man. Number seven, Peyton Pritchard. The Celtics guard is out for the next two weeks with a sprained MCL in his right knee. But before he got hurt against the Sixers on January 22nd, he had the highest plus minus among rookies in the 2020-21 season. Peyton dropped 23 points on 8 of 13 shooting against my Raptors, and it's clear Boston's guard is built for the moment and is capable of being a legit contributor for the contending Celts. While the injury looked painful, it might have been a blessing in disguise because the two weeks off actually could help Peyton avoid hitting the rookie wall and be fresh for the playoffs with the NBA veteran-esque way in which he mixes up his drives and three-point shots. He looks like a complete draft steal for Boston. Pritchard has elite passing vision, a quick shooting release, and an above-average off-the-dribble shooting ability for a first-year player. Number six, Anthony Edwards. Every player ranked so far has had the luxury of joining a franchise where they've been expected to be role players. Conversely, the number one pick, Anthony Edwards, has had the responsibility of being an NBA team's top scoring option. With Cat's injury, Ant is taking the third most amount of shots on the Wolves right now, behind Malik Beasley and D'Angelo Russell. And while Edwards has struggled with his shooting percentages, if he was put in the right situation like some of the other players on this list, things could be a different story for him. Despite his struggles, I think Anthony will get his game together and he's too talented to have his current value ranked outside of the top six. Number five, Patrick Williams. Chicago's front office absolutely shocked the world when they drafted Williams with their fourth overall pick, a man who was projected to be taken deep in the 2020 lottery. 
but the Bulls taking him is turning out to be an excellent decision, because next to the superstar-like pure scoring of Zach Levine at shooting guard, the rebounding, wing defense, and solid jump shot at 6'7", 227 pounds is exactly what the Bulls needed at the small forward spot. Before their loss to the top-seeded Lakers, the Bulls won their last three games, and they're having their best season in a very long time, and the rookie Patty Williams deserves a decent amount of credit for that. Number four, Tyrese Maxey. Give credit to Sixer coach Doc Rivers for giving their 21st overall pick in the draft, Maxey, the consistent minutes in the rotation that he deserves. Coaches giving prospects the proper consistent playing time as rookies is such a crucial, undermentioned aspect in a player's development and Tyrese has been thriving off the opportunity he's been given as he put up 39 points against the Denver Nuggets, which was right behind Allen Iverson for the Sixers franchise record. It was also the most points in a rookie's first start since 1970. Maxi's scoring consistency for Philadelphia has resembled a player that's been in the league for half a decade plus. From January 7th to 14th, the 20-year-old Maxi had at least 15 points in five straight games. Overall, the man's creating and exploding off the bounce like a top NBA prospect, and because of his naturally gifted qualities, don't be surprised if he's a top guard in the world within the next few years. Number three, James Wiseman. James hasn't fully developed his ability to pop out to the three-point line. However, he is shooting a decent six of 16 on his attempts from out there. I think we can expect Wiseman to develop into a decent stretch big as his career progresses, but for now, he's a solid paint presence for the Steph Curry-led Warriors, who are currently tied for the 8th seed out west. Draymond Green got a tech because the ref thought he was yelling at him, but really Green was yelling at Wiseman, and I know Draymond can be harsh at times, a lot of times, but his mentorship should ultimately be a positive influence on the growth of the Warriors' 19-year-old man in the middle. The 7-foot, 244-pound rook needs to be averaging more than 6 rebounds because his size should be overwhelming, he should be dominating, he also should be shooting more than 63% from the line, but he's already damn productive for his lack of pro experience. I think James is doing a great job in a pressured situation, and for many years to come, he should be a focal point up front in the bay. Number 2, Tyrese Halliburton. The Sacramento Kings hit the lottery with the 12th overall pick. As the former Iowa State Cyclone, Tyrese Halliburton is the real deal. He's averaged 11 points, 5 assists, and over a steal per game on 50% shooting from the field and 47% shooting from distance. His four blocks against the Knicks this past Friday were the most by any rookie this season. His lanky 6'7 and a half foot wingspan at point guard combined with his shockingly lethal three point stroke make him a nightmare to stop and his size on the other end make him a sensational defender for a first year player. Before number one, main honorable mentions to Cole Anthony, who's provided above average leadership for a rookie in Orlando, and Denny Avdia, who only averages seven points on a three and eight Wizards team, but he has shot the ball extremely efficiently. Also mentions to Sadiq Bey, Xavier Tillman Sr., Precious Achua, Mason Jones, Jay Sean Tate, and Isaiah Joe. Number one, LaMelo Ball. Off the bench in Charlotte, Melo's averaging 11 points, 6 rebounds, and 6 assists on good shooting percentages for a rookie point guard. Based off that production, of course the ultimate big baller, LaMelo's dad, LeVar Ball, is going to be upset that his son's coming off the bench. And LeVar predictably said to TMZ, quote, My boys are not freaking role players, they superstars, let them do what they do. But as with any 19 year old, you have to take the bad with the good, because after a 7 game stretch in which Ball averaged 15.6 points, 7.4 rebounds, and 7.1 assists per game while shooting 46% from the field, Ball's turned the ball over 11 times in the last 3 games, and as coach James Borrego said, quote, if you're turning the ball over 5 times in 16 minutes, that ain't gonna cut it for me. If you're doing that on the offensive end, you better bring something defensively. He had a better stretch where he played extremely well. We need to find that again. He's got to get better. He's engaged. He wants to get better. He's capable of handling it." End quote. Overall, LaMelo's learning on the fly, and while there's going to be bumps on the road like right now, the weapons he has in his bag offensively are too deep not to have him at number one. It's going to be a three-way race between him, Halliburton, and Wiseman for the Rookie of the Year. 
And the pro season that LaMelo has under his belt before he entered the league is tremendously benefiting him in the NBA right now because Ball gained a season of experience playing against grown men in Australia's NBL before this year. He likely won't hit the proverbial rookie wall because of that, and I expect him to have more good offensive stretches than bad ones like he's having right now. I respond to every comment, so let me know who your prediction is for the 2021 Rookie of the Year down below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlowHoops to stay tuned and to be friends. You're the best for sticking around until the end. This was DFlow. And I'll see you next video.